All right. Guys, as always, we're looking at um, the pound dollar and the pound uh, yen. We are looking at midterm scenarios and uh, intraday short-term um, scenarios for these two pairs. I'll be looking at um, these pairs from uh, starting from a blank chart, um, perform a quick analysis of, um, of each of them, and then look at the rainbow template set up to be um, more concise today, uh, to have enough time for GBP, JPY as well. All right. So let's get started with GU. Um, I'm looking at the weekly chart first. Just drawing the basic um, lines on these on, on this chart, uh, support resistance and uh, trend lines. Going to use specific colors for each uh, time frame. So I will note uh, later on when I um, zoom in on the smaller charts where these levels uh, come from. All right, we have a big resistance level. I think we're, I'll push this to the highs. The level would be. Uh, 6261. I took the high of the last candle, last week's candle. Then we have the support for the current um, the current uh, wave right here at this bottom, 5353. Which is quite close to to my current line and the ascending trend line. Same color. All right, and there is also a counter trend line right here. All right, now this will be the picture on the weekly chart. Guys, there is one one conclusion um, I have for um, based on this chart. I was looking at the current wave started at uh, this support um, around 153.50. And I was looking to see some resistance here in this area for the past few weeks, around 160. Well, 160 was breached, but not only it was breached uh, briefly, price went up to 16260, then came back and found some support at this previous 160 resistance. So this becomes a key level for me, even on the weekly chart, even with this um Price agglomeration here, 159.80, 160 essentially. I think we'll um, have a better view on the weekly chart. So this becomes key level for anything uh, bearish, anything uh, mid-term, long-term bearish. I'll be looking for this 160 to break before calling a short. Otherwise, I'm looking at the 78 fib of the previous down wave broken. That means that we could just uh, as well have the current wave advancing through 162.60, also a key level of resistance, it's a previous high, all right, and starting to move up. Also, as a backup of this, um, for this bullish bias that I have on the weekly chart is the current falling trend line where we closed above and right now we're pulling back to retest the same trend line. Again, I think the daily chart will be um easier to let's say to to uh, to organize it it will be easier to to organize these lines these levels on the daily chart we do not have any break of trend line to the downside and we do not have the break of the key 15350 level obviously we're looking now we are at towards the top of this wave so we're looking for a uh, move to the upside for as long as this wave is still active then the bias for midterm, uh, long term will remain uh, uh, bullish. That's right, Mike. It's a proprietary indicator. I developed it based on, um, well, um, it's uh, it's mainly based on on the moving averages, on all time frames, and b uh, basically what this indicator is identifying is not or and not only the order of the moving averages, but on which time frames. Uh, that specific order of those uh, exact uh, um, moving averages is happening. So that means um, I'll uh, I'll get this uh, average, let's say this uh, uh, diagnosis of the current trend, which is now 35% bearish. This is uh, to be used intraday 
uh, it's not for scalping, but it's not for uh, for midterm, long term either, because um, for scalping it's too um, too slow, and for uh, for long term it's uh, it's actually too uh, too fast. It's changing too uh, too much. So it's an intraday indicator, and it's me it's meant to be complemented by something else. It's just uh, there to keep me uh, aware of uh, what the big picture is and give me at a glance the say the the pulse of the market. Uh, I developed it um, with well very specific um, uh, settings in mind um, that I, I adjusted myself. Uh, I, I wanted this indicator to be um, versatile enough to change when the market is actually doing something important, but not um, take into account uh, every sneeze of the market. So change that uh, that uh, bias um, 20 times per day. Yeah, as soon as I get um, say a as I'm sure that this indicator is um, is um, good enough, it's, it's reliable enough to be uh, to be released uh, to you guys. Um, I'll be uh, I'll, I'll make it available. All right, let's continue with the daily chart. This chart is actually confirming what we were uh, saying before. I have this uh, daily trend line. She's defining for now the trend. I think I'll keep it here on starting from this low and moving it lower. Let's see if this works. Not really in not the way it's not the way I wanted it. All right. I think this is a more appropriate um, way to to draw this trend line. As you can see, guys, we are towards the the previous resistance on this daily chart, which is right around here, 161, 20, 161, okay, and it's where the weekly trend line broke. Right now, we would retest this weekly trend line, and we are also on the daily trend line, just about 20 pips lower than the current price. On the other hand, we have divergences here on the MACD, but the MACD does not uh, have yet a bearish reading, so Let's just say the MACD is waiting for a bearish confirmation um, on the daily chart. Let me see if there's anything well interesting to, to point out on this chart. I have the previous uh, resistance 6262 um, holding. Okay, we had a first test here. We had a second test. I think we're looking at basically um, a one, two, three, four, five. Divergence on histogram. Uh, not really. I, I just used the, the histogram. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, George. Yes, uh, I, I wasn't sure I get, I'm getting your, your question right. Uh, there is sometimes the, the divergence on the histogram, just like it is here. You see, you see the, the actual um, curves going higher. You, you have a higher high um, in MACD, but the histogram is going lower. I'm taking it into account, but I can't say I, I use it in a systematic way. This histogram, this uh, divergence on the histogram. All right. Now let's see the four-hour chart. I'm looking at the indicators here. It's the first uh, time frame where my indicators are giving me some um, stronger bias, and uh, indeed we have uh, bearish bias um, on all three of them. The yeah, MACD is opening up nicely. I think we have also a four-hour trend line uh, being retested as we speak. That's correct, right here. Somehow I feel that uh, we're not too far away from um, at least a temporary support. We'll see if the smaller time frames are confirming the same uh, idea. Because I see three lines of different colors converging in this 160-120 area. There's a weekly trend line, okay, uh, since it's a bigger uh, chart. And, um, well, those lines, of course, are supposed to have relevance so on the weekly chart. Uh, I could ignore it, but I cannot also ignore that the daily is around the same level. And also the 4-hour has um, a counter trend line providing support around the same uh, level, not to mention that we're looking at the horizontal level of resistance as well, around the same levels, um, maybe slightly higher, uh, 61.50.
All right. This is a four hour level. The bias is pretty clear on the indicators. I want to see if wave wise we have um, a possible signal. I don't see anything um, interesting enough. Uh, basically, guys, you see there's a previous resistance right around here where the previous candle closed, okay, around 61.55. Uh, the current candle looks like breaking that um, that support level, but uh, we're not sure until the candle is closing, and my, um, my candle has another uh, 105 minutes to go. Plenty of time to see uh, GU uh, closing back above 161.60. So this gives me um strong uh, word of caution for um for GU shorts which probably is the signal right now on the smaller charts um it tells me to wait for this uh, area of 6120 to be clearly broken we'll see if there are other arguments um in the same direction it's possible if we find something interesting on the 5 minute chart to to point out uh, an aggressive uh, entry uh, against the trend on that specific time frame with very tight stop. We'll see if we have anything there. Let's see uh, the one hour chart. Still looks like a pullback. I don't have um, the decisive um, 78 level, 78 fib broken at this point. Uh, actually, we're far away from that 78 fib. Um, we are retracing the previous move up. 50% uh, fib is around 61.30 along with the other lines you can see this agglomeration of um, lines of different colors around here definitely 61.30, 61.20 is the level to watch and I would say that since we are only 20 pips above that level of support it's probably uh, safer and wiser to allow the market to either breach this area clearly and at least we can short below the support uh, when all these trend lines are already um, above and price has, has broken clearly through the area or cancel the shorting um, intention once price settles above 61.50 which is a previous support that well looks broken right now but the, it, it still hasn't uh, settled the resistance there so we, we, we're not sure if we have breakout and retest. It could be just a fake breakout. Of course, we don't know until um, we see another at least one or two candles uh, closing around here. There is some support currently on the one-hour chart. All right. I'm already looking for possible formations um, on GU um, wave formations. Uh, possible divergences at this bottom. This would be the wave pattern starting uh, yesterday's high, um, yesterday during the uh, US session. One, two, three, four, five. The wave tree is the one, um, the breakout from the Asian session, very strong. Then the pullback, finding some resistance at the pivot level, um, looks to me very much like a wave four. This could be the wave 5. That means retracements can go up to approximately 38.2 of the current wave, which is this one. So that means a possible retest of 61.70. Remember that if we have a bullish wave starting here, especially since we have some trend line support uh, too, then the fact that it retraces up to, to uh, maybe 61.80 or 61.90 will not mean that it's bullish, it's just going to uh, define a retracement wave on the entire move. Okay, it could be wave 4 of a bigger 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or if if this wave is over here, then it could be a retracement of maybe 38, 50% of the entire drop, so um, we can expect 162 even. Alright, but uh, I'm not... Uh, calling any longs right now. Let me uh, see all the charts first and uh, I'll also look at the rainbow um, template uh, before drawing any conclusions. 15 minutes chart is not really divergent. It's just uh, clear that we have this support um, close to a, an S3 um, pivot point. Seems like the range of uh, of the day seems a bit exhausted. 
We've uh, traveled quite a lot since yesterday, more than 110 pips, 120 pips approximately. That's right, Mike. That, uh, these are the sessions. I think um, it's uh, they're adapted to, not necessarily to the London Open or the New York Open, but to my idea of uh, sessions which sometimes does not correspond exactly with um, with the opening of the... Um, of the stock market, it's more where I know that the London volatility is starting, and uh, also when I'm following these colors, I know that if there's a move uh, happening exactly at the border between uh, two sessions, I'll have to be careful and not uh, be very confident on of a signal that comes out immediately exactly the first candle of the session, because that uh, many times can be a trap and price is uh, going the opposite way. It's uh, pointless to just stay uh, the whole session and uh, um, go against the market when, uh, even if you are correct in the end, when you can just um, wait for the market to, to retrace without you um, being in. All right, quick look at the 15 minutes chart again. There's some divergence here, pretty strong actually, on the, on the MACD. And that's, uh, that combined with the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 pattern I was mentioning gives me uh, one of my Elliott Wave uh, setups long. So, indeed, I can point out the first scenario right here, right now, um, a long. Already, since I said long, it's been up uh, about 6 pips. It's really important that you take this very close to the bottom because it's a very risky uh, entry and it's against the trend, always against the trend, so your stop will have to be really tight because this setup assumes that the market has bottomed here temporarily at least, so you are entering for at least, um, let's say, 1.5 of the risk you take, okay? Around the one-to-one -one risk to reward, you cover the risk with stop at break even, and then, well, it's up to you. Either you, you can uh, wait for a, bit, for a little bit more, or if that uh, wave uh, happens to be uh, at a key level and you think it, it might advance and even reverse, then you can uh, take a chance and keep it open. That could give you, with a, for a very small price, uh, a possible ticket into um, a big trend uh, of even hundreds of pips sometimes. Because this is this setup, based on, uh, on waves and divergences, is one that you find at the bottom of the wave of of any wave actually, uh, especially the, um, the um, impulsive wave. So if you think about things, uh, let's say, uh, at a larger scale, you know that a five wave formation has also um, sub waves and wave five has also five sub waves and if this formation happens somewhere at the bottom of wave five on one or two or three levels, the the more um, convergence there is between those uh, those setup um, those setups the the bigger the, the projected target. In any case, this will be the first signal. Uh, let me mark it here. I'll look at the rainbow um, <coughs> template in just a second. I'll mark it with orange lines as always. All right, this will be the entry somewhere around. Actually, I would wait for 6150. Uh, even a few pips um, matter because you're going against the trend here. Okay, here you go. So this would be then entry around, let's see, I think 50 right now has been uh, reached uh, by level. But the stop does not, should not exceed the previous low. So maximum stop 61.30. Okay, that's a risk of 20 pips. For these uh, setups, you can only risk the amount, um, the, the difference between current price and the previous um, most recent low or high. Because this setup assumes that we bottom here. It could be right, it could be wrong. In any case, you, you're not supposed to risk more than that. Um, why is this such a strong um, rule? It's because you are against the trend. Um, with this uh, setup, always you're going against the trend. So you are you're actually um, taking this chance for a very good risk to reward. If you extend your stop, the, risk, the great risk to reward is actually over. Uh, no, Mike. 
Not really, no. Not not really. <laughs> well, since you asked about this, now if, if you're talking about a, um, a trade against the trend, like the one we're, we're currently considering, I don't know, I think there might be interesting uh, conclusions you can draw from there as well. But I like um, using things that are actually on the chart, not not so much statistical information. All right. Now here, even if you take it two pips or three pips lower, it's also um, you're, you're gaining two pips uh, from the stop. You you just reduce your stop with two three pips. You extend your target with two three pips. So that's a win both ways. Uh, remember, this is a very aggressive entry, a very aggressive setup. Okay, I'm just pointing it out because it's um, among the the four the five setups that I'm actually trading on the Elliott wave. All right, now let's see if the rainbow setup is agreeing with this um, aggressive um, move. Now I'm just going to go through. Um, uh, yes, George. Yes, I I heard about that. Well, you're coming from in forex, obviously that's. Uh, that's something we we cannot get because of the um, of the size of the market and uh, the fact that it's not regulated anywhere and no one can centralize the volumes but the volumes are actually important yes so it's indeed as you say a proxy um it cannot be 100% um, accurate though all right now we're looking at the clear bullish trend on the daily chart okay the signal came somewhere uh, two weeks well one and a half weeks ago Right here, this would be the second alignment of of the MAs in the direction of the rainbow. Rainbow is bullish, as you can see. It's uh, widely open. All right, with bottom at five seven seventy five. That's where this um, this bias changes on the daily chart. Let's see the four hour. We're looking at a very clear um, consolidation on this chart, but definitely. Um, it did not cross the barrier of the 200 MA, okay? And we're looking also at this supporting trend line. I'm not going to draw it here, but it's pretty obvious. So the 4-hour definitely um, is not saying shorts. It's just saying maybe if you want to, to trade on this time frame, you would like to wait for price to get out of the rainbow somewhere around 162, 162.20. But in any case, there's no short uh, bias here. All right, one second. The bottom the rainbow. And we see already that this support um, where all the other lines, if you remember the previous chart, uh, all the other um, four-hour and daily and even weekly trend lines converge. Right there, there's the bottom of this uh, one-hour rainbow, which is quite interesting. Okay, uh, right now we're trading um, inside the rainbow, back inside the rainbow. We only had one candle closing outside. There's nothing that's not, it's not um, suggesting that um, direction will change. Only when there is significant price action below the 200, I am abandoning the bullish bias on that time frame and thinking that price would go back and then return down. The way it looks right now, it might go back up and not return to the downside. Just follow the trend as it is defined on the daily and the four hour chart. All right, let's see the four hour. Uh, the, sorry, the 30 minutes. This is a sort of, um, of bearish rainbow I was just mentioning. So this is where the bullish rainbow breaks right here. You see a pullback. Okay. And when price comes back from this pullback, you get your short bias. So definitely we'll have, uh, I think uh, we, we can define at this point a short setup on GU. Um, I'll come back to this chart. Finally, 15 minutes chart. All right, bearish signal right uh, towards the beginning of uh, the European session. On the other hand, right now we're looking at uh, some good support uh, settled here at 61.40. So for the 15 minutes to be reactivated as a bearish. Um, uh, time frame, we will need price back around 61.30, 61.40. All right, now with all this, we can draw some conclusions. First thing I want to point out, guys, we are in a bullish trend on the bigger charts, and I think these charts are the ones to be trusted. 
when it comes to defining trends. I'm not really a fan of uh, following trends on the five minute chart or one minute chart. I don't really consider those to be trends because uh, simply the the time uh, the time um, zone and and uh, the duration of those moves are are simply not long enough to to be relevant. Okay, we do have support possible support on a previous resistance on the daily chart. We have weekly trend line, which is actually supporting right now price action. We have daily support trend line. I think this one is the most important right now. And the four hour counter trend line giving support, coincidentally or not, right around the, the levels where uh, GU seems to have spiked. Now, as I was just saying about 10 minutes ago, it looks like a break of 61.50, but before you see this candle closing, you cannot say that this is really a breakout. I was saying that um, in relation to the four-hour chart. Here you go. Right now, the four-hour candle is a bullish candle, and actually, it's moving quite uh, strongly. It's already up 30 pips from that 61.50 level. By the way, anyone uh, took that uh, that setup? I call that setup "kiss of the dragon." I know it's a funny word. It's uh, it's a funny name. One of my friends uh, was joking uh, about it, and that's how we've been calling it ever since. That's good, Ryan. Uh, oh, sorry, uh, it's um, Ivan. Um, since you took the the chance of uh, trading against the trend, Ivan, um, now there are two options. You have only 20 pips of profit right now. Price is moving quite abruptly. Uh, I would suggest to tighten that stop from 61.30 to 61.40 already. It's not really, um, well, you, you only have 20 pips of profit, but remember that you risk 20 pips for the trade, and you have 20 pips, you actually touch 30 pips uh, just a few seconds back. So there are two possibilities here. Either you are going to to just reduce the risk, actually from uh, from uh, sixty one eighty. If it touch, if it goes back there, you can uh, move stop to break even. It's really important that you uh, you reduce the risk as soon as possible and consider this as let's say a lucky move, a lucky entry with uh, a cheap entry into a possible big move. Okay, the the really good thing now is if this trade of yours goes above 61.90 and you're in at 61.50, very close to the bottom, you can afford simply setting a stop at break even and forgetting about it and see if it can um, give you a move towards at least 163.10. That would be a really very big profit compared to just 20 pips that you risk for uh, for the entry. Well, uh, profits are for uh, for those who dare. If you remember, guys, the trend meter was 38%, and right now it's down at uh, 11%, which already translates into a flat reading. So it only took just a few pips. I'm uh, actually surprised how how quickly this indicator responded to to price um, to to the market action. It's already 11% flat. All right. Hopefully, the hourly candle closes somewhere above 61.60. That would look good for a continuation and a possible retest up. All right. I see the 30 minutes MACD turning bullish. That's very good. Yes, well, George, for me, uh, I, I, I stopped um, trying to understand which is the precise reason for a certain move in the market. The market is just large, and there are so many factors contributing to this price action. For me, of course, yes, I, I know it, that there was a fundamental coming out uh, at the usual hour at 9.30, but that's right, George, that's right. I, I, I understand, especially if you have a broker that widens spread. That 20 pips of uh, stop that I suggested could have been uh, wiped out in uh, half a second. I understand that perfectly. It's just that I, I've been learning these scenarios by looking at price, looking at a lot of moves and testing a lot backwards before um, actually observing them in real time. And when I did that, I could not take fundamentals into account. It was just too much. So I just decided to stick to, to, to technical 
that's why right now when I'm when I'm trading, I see something like this. If I want to take it, I take it regardless of the news, because my broker does not widen spreads. So I know that if I have my stop hit, well, whether uh, it's it's because of fundamental reasons or technical, it doesn't matter. But the important thing is the technical setup that I took that trade for is no longer valid, and that's what I need to know. If it's no longer valid, then hitting my stop loss is the right thing to uh, to do, and I don't mind. Uh, at the same time, sometimes the news is a, is a good catalyst, and uh, that's where you get um, very easy off the hook. Like, uh, for instance, Ivan right now, he took a trade that right now, well, he's only in profit about 20 pips, but... Uh, if price advances just a few pips more, he's uh, into a free ride. Whether this will take it, uh, will, will take him uh, for a big uh, 300, 400 pips of profit, or just uh, a few uh, more pips, it, it's not uh, relevant. The important thing is in a risk-free uh, ride, and you rarely get this without a bit of a of an intervention from the fundamental side. All right. Um, let me just conclude this because I think I'm going over time. I, I won't have time for GJ if I don't um, finish with GU very quickly. Uh, there is something on the rainbow that I want to point out. First of all, uh, it's the same conclusion as um, what I was saying earlier. We are into a bullish trend on the daily chart. We are into a bullish trend on the four-hour chart with a retreat. Basement consolidation. I cannot even see the candles here because of the agglomeration of moving averages. So these two charts give me uh, the objective trend that I like to to trade. Okay, and it's always nice to be in the direction of these uh, two charts. Then I have the one-hour chart that gives me support right at the bottom of the rainbow. That's argument number two. Okay. And that tells me if there is a bounce, and many times the bounce is exactly at the top, at, at the bottom of the rainbow, which is a moving average. Okay, then an entry here in the direction of the bigger move, and actually, technically, in the direction of the one-hour trend, because I do not consider this to be a trend. I consider this to be a retracement, and this would be the trend right now on my one-hour chart. Uh, I know many would disagree because. Price has been making series of lower lows and lower highs. So that's the definition, classic definition of a trend. However, it didn't even breach the 50% of the previous move. So I cannot trade it uh, lower, assuming that the market will be doing something else than what it's been doing over the last few days. Okay? My assumption is always that the market will continue to do, it's, it's more likely to continue to do what it's been doing rather than change that behavior. All right? This would be the third argument. Then uh, around here, actually, the 30 minutes charts and below are just telling me that we breached the Rosa Tell where beyond 162 and 6220, everything will turn bullish. So at that point, you can actually add based on the smaller uh, time frames and increase your exposure, especially since if you are in profit, of course, about 50 pips, it's not, uh, it's not a problem to, uh, to increase your exposure. Um, if, you are, if price is going down right now, according to these smaller charts, 30 minutes, 15 minutes, then you know that starting around 61.40, 61.30, you will be getting a short signal. So for me, the map of the current situation is pretty clear. This is the current minor support on the pound. I wouldn't have my stop anywhere beyond 61.35, 61.40 now, regardless of the setup. It's just not worth risking more, okay? Because if things are working out, they should be working out even with this small push that the market uh, has made. You see, the current high is higher than the previous high. So that means the last small swing was retraced completely, which means that it was not retraced. It was actually price reversed from here. It's not a retracement anymore. When the, the market goes more than 99% of the previous wave, that means it, it has a new direction. So if it works out this long, it should work out now. And again, there's no point in having a stop beyond 161.40, in my opinion, right now. This, of course, is a 30 pips uh, exposure 
uh, from the current level in uh, in the market. Okay, if we manage to climb above 61.85, 61.90, this stop would be a break even, and you would think about maybe switching to a five minutes short and trying to take a long signal on the rainbow on the five minutes and actually um, more. I would disagree with that. Actually, for me, 78% is a very strong level of support resistance, and it uh, it tends to be um, respected by the market many times. For me, that's really a, a, a scary level if I am going against it. For instance, if I am shorting, and I see that basically I am with the trend, but I am sitting on the 78, if that scares me. Or, of course, uh, the other way around, if I'm buying and the market is uh, up at the 78, you know? So, even 78 hit can be a retracement. Technically, you, you say retracement because price is just giving back some of the gains. If it's giving back more than 99%, logically, you, you cannot even use that word um, properly because it's, it's just um, breaking the, the, um, the formation. And also, it tells me that this move here, okay, well, it was an impulse, in my opinion, because it was um, it's bigger than the previous move, all right? But when a move is smaller than the previous move and smaller than the move after that, it's definitely a retracement. You know that, of course, you know it after the fact, but it's not it's not a problem because the waves are actually a, a set of, op of of probabilities that you you um, design according to what the market is giving you. So even if you are a bit late. It's all right. It's good to settle um, short things on the chart, okay? Since we, we cannot be sure about where the market is going next, we can be sure about what happened, I don't know, half an hour ago or one hour ago, and we can base our current probabilities on that information. And I think that's, that's a good solid point to start. All right. So, uh, well, those of you who um, went into this move uh, early uh, have a good um, a jump start here. In any case, guys, I would um, say that 6140 will break this current um, this current bullish um, small momentum so far. I don't know where it's going, but so far it's just a minor move. Um, it has the advantage of being in the direction of the bigger trend, as I was pointing out on the 4-hour and daily chart. On the other hand, it has to confirm first. If we have 6140, um, let's just say, just to make sure, 6130, if we have a fresh low, then definitely at this point, there's no point to continue buying. This would be a signal on my 30 minutes chart. You can see the first alignment, the first time that the red and the yellow moving averages are breaking free from the agglomeration of moving averages. That is technically a signal, but it's the signal that I do not take because it's the one that breaks a bullish rainbow. Okay? Now the bullish rainbow has been broken. All I need is one more confirmation. Okay? The market to tell me again that this is what it's happening, the MAs are aligning again in, in the new direction, then this is a good enough, um, let's say, um, it's, it's a reliable indication that indeed we, we might be going down more. And then, well, the, at that point, when the 30 minutes and 15 minutes charts are confirming shorts and the 4 hour and daily remain bullish, that's when you have to make your decision, are you going to be aggressive and to trade against your your main trend? Just because, well, sometimes they, they can be very profitable. The, the market, it, when it's reversing aggressively, you, you can get uh, hundreds of pips. But uh, on the other hand, uh, the, the reactions in the market when you're trading against the trend can be unpredictable. So that's really up to you. Um, honestly, I prefer trading when the short term is agreeing with the mid term. I have no trade right now on GU. I prefer having a long, and I'm saying long because that's what the four hour and daily chart are suggesting. Having a long when the market, at least on the five minutes rainbow, is confirming to me that there is a, a minor move already confirmed, already underway. As you can see, if you look at the rainbow on the five minutes, we just, so we just, okay, of course, uh, as, as the, 
saying goes, a, a, a journey of 1,000 miles begins with one step, right? So this could be that first step to uh, maybe 170. You, you never know. But actually, before you see that at least two or three steps were already made, it's better to assume that the journey has not started yet. Uh, only if you trade aggressively with tight stops and you tighten those stops even more along the way, be very, very aggressive with, with tightening stops when you're trading against the trend, then it's the only way it's worth uh, staying in, in this in, in this market right now. Like that uh, trade um, that Ivan took, that's apparently, I mean, uh, in, in my opinion, it's worth it because 20 pips is almost nothing. And he already managed to, to touch uh, a 30 pips profit with that trade. So, of course, profit could, could have been taken there, but it's it's actually more interesting to, to try and see if the market is going to shoot up from here. Because if it does, the, the profit is just great compared to that 20 pips of risk. Thick pink line. No, Mike, uh, the thick pink line is always the 200 moving average on the next bigger time frame. It's the top of the rainbow on the next time frame. So this one is the 600 because the next bigger time frame is three times uh, bigger. So three times the 200 MA. On the 15 minute short, I have, uh, I think, a 400. That's right, 400 because the next bigger chart is uh, twice as big and so on. Just to give me a um, uh, um, quick um, idea where I am um, with regard to the bigger time frame. All right, guys, just a very quick look at the GJ. I'm going to look at the rainbow uh, only. Right now, I cannot afford more. Um, seems like um, I'm out of time. As always, GU is uh, eating up a lot of time. So just let's do just uh, the rainbow analysis on this um, pair, okay? We're looking here at bullish rainbow on this daily chart. On the other hand, on GJ, I have a special behavior of this pair to take into account. The fact that it likes a lot double tops, double bottoms, um, triple tops, triple bottoms, support resistance level. So if I have resistance here, here at 135, not to mention this is a round number, I'm going to be very careful about this. Okay? It is a bullish uh, on the four hour the triple top. Very serious um, patterns for me. Something that I really um, put a lot of, uh, of emphasis on uh, double tops or triple tops. That's definitely telling me something. So um, I tend to, to go against the trend more often when I see something like this based on this uh, triple top. So yes, we are inside the rainbow here. We do not see well the candle. So the four hour chart is just telling me we are into a consolidation. So the smart thing to do is to simply wait for price to go out. On the other hand, well, I cannot help seeing that we, we made a very uh, big resistance at 135.40, and I like the level too, just 40 pips above the round number, and it spiked up to, let's see, I think it's 135.45, yeah, 135.45, which is just enough to take out some uh, minor stops above the round number. All right, that's a beautiful uh, re test of this previous resistance with um, a drop and a close inside the rainbow during the Asian session, then a drop. This is the, you see, it's not really an alignment yet here. You only have MA going out. It's only now that the yellow is following. Okay, this is the first alignment. Now, just because I see the setup, this alignment for short is actually more trustworthy than um, it you that than it would be usually because we had a first thrust here, so I don't really have to see two of these scenarios with red and yellow. Even if this one, well, it was it happened too fast. The yellow moving averages did not have time to drop, but there was a move that broke the rainbow. Then we had a very strong um, pullback that bounce off the top of the rainbow at 134.7. And this move here seems to me like one that can actually go down uh, lower. I would um, only suggest shorts at this point for GJ based on these daily 4-hour and, and the 1-hour charts. 
Okay, this is your first alignment on the 30 minutes, the one I, I said that you should be careful about and not take, you tend to be very late, and this is the second alignment. As uh, it happens many times, it's the best um, the best uh, shorting signal you get. Also, the, the, the stop is right um, behind the last MA of the rainbow, so it's not a big uh, stop. 15 minutes short, it's suggesting the same thing, and um, the setup uh, happened around 134.30, already producing about uh, 60 pips in this uh, move. So um, I do not see anything bullish on this GJ, guys. I think uh, shorts are are definitely favored at this time. We even had a retracement back to the previous support, which now turns into resistance. So, well, contrary to what I wanted to uh, to suggest, I was hoping to, to see something bullish, so it would agree with my GU um, scenario. I would suggest shorts at this point stops right beyond the current high. That's just because we had support turning into resistance, so that means short, let me just mark this level, since I want to give at least one scenario for um, for GJ as well, short from the current level, now the stop is always tricky on GJ because it can uh, spike back to, to 23 and make a double top here, and that would really be frustrating if you are shorting and then you see you are right, so depending on how much you can afford um, I would suggest a bigger stop this time, up to 134.45 plus a few pips of, uh, let's just make it 134.49, that's 60 pips of risk. Well, it's up to you if, if you want to take this sort of risk, but I would suggest a bigger uh, stop. Why? Because we are trading with the main trend on on the 4-hour chart. Uh, well, not really. Not on the 4-hour chart. We're trading with the main move, um, and we are trading with this triple top. Uh, what gives me the confidence to still try inside this consolidation is the bottom of the rainbow is quite far away, so it's 130 to 80. That would be my target. Okay? The 4-hour rainbows are not so easy to breach. So, we can still consolidate. You see, the short does not contradict this rainbow and this um, consolidation that can go just as well to 13280 still be aligned with a with a daily chart which remains bullish four hour remains bullish and still manage to get a few pips off the retracement that's correct george that's correct that's the correct way to trade especially when not all of the elements of the trade are are uh, ticked in your favor so Usually, well, it, it depends if you are if you are trading if if you really want to make the most out of each pip in the market and you you want to make pips on on uh, moves on main moves on retracements on everything then well <laughs> you can expose as much as you want but if your approach is more like mine you want to take pips when the market is trending and when all elements are are on your side and then maybe I don't know just touch a little bit of uh, I don't know some 5, 10 pips, 15 pips, 20 pips, whatever you can take on the retracement, then you would consider that this opportunity for, let's say, 50, 100 pips is, uh, is a pretty good uh, um, trade to pass your time before G GJ goes back up, if it goes back up, of course. No, actually, Mike, I'm trading a lot of Euro-Dollar, a lot of Euro-Dollar uh, based on two or three systems, and uh, trading GU and GJ, just whenever I see something interesting, I've, I've been trading more uh, EU than anything else lately. It's just that for this session, I prefer to look at GU and GJ because there's a lot of action during uh, London hours uh, right at the time of my uh, of my webinar. So uh, since I know I cannot focus on more than two pairs in one session, I prefer to, to choose uh, GU and GJ, so at least... Uh, the GBB fans can uh, can get something out of it. <laughs> uh, I've been hating it lately, Mike. Uh, it didn't give me um, uh, profits for the last uh, week and a half. I'm uh, I'm struggling with it, uh, to be honest. It's normal. I mean, I I know these this sort of uh, periods have to come every now and then, uh, but it's not uh, it's not been great on my systems at least because I'm 
I, I like to, to keep trading um, in one direction and not just uh, re-enter many, many times. And uh, it's been uh, changing its mind so often that it's interfering with my setups. All right, guys, I'll have to stop here. I'll just give you my uh, email in case you want to have a look, and um, also in, in in case you have some um, some questions I could not answer during the webinar. No problems. A pleasure as always. Uh, if you guys are interested in this um, in this uh, template, uh, um, I will send it to you. It's not mine. I just adapted it uh, from an existing um, template I found online. No worries, knife trader. I'm I'm um, actually trying to to make it uh, let's say more organized to to reorganize it. That's the word right now. To um, to provide it uh, to to provide some automated signals uh, because I, sometimes I miss uh, some uh, some uh, signals uh, happening during the night. I missed the the move on euro dollar short since uh, this morning because I was sleeping at the time and uh, I was annoyed by that. So I'm I'm actually trying to make the the signals automated and then manage them manually. I think that's uh, that's a good compromise not to miss uh, important moves in the market and at, at the same time not to be at the mercy of an expert advisor. All right. Thanks again, guys, for um, for joining today, and I hope you'll have a profitable week. For anything, um, don't hesitate to drop me an email.